Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous second day of spring 2019. That would make it Friday, March 22nd, 2019. So Friday morning, I'm just doing what I do every Friday morning, and that's bringing you my ecological meltdown roundup rant. And uh, before I dive into that, just want to take a quick dip into the very pleasant task of welcoming Sai Sai, Sai Sai uh, Alert Tribes member, Sai Sai being the newest uh, member of that exclusive club called the Hambone Patreon page. And I want to welcome uh, Sai Sai to the club and I do thank everybody who has ever found it in their hearts and their wallets to uh, <clears throat> support what I and the little dog do with our lives bringing you this information such as the collapse of the planet uh, which we're going to dive into right now, and I think this is over in the Indian Ocean, although it can pretty much be any ocean. We're going to start, as I always do, at mongabay.com. Mongabay.com, the, the, my number one favorite environmental newsletter. And uh, so, Mongabay, we, we have some audio to share with you. What they have done is audio what <clears throat> underwater sounds can tell us about Indian Ocean humpbacks. So this is marine biologist Isho Bopardikar, uh, an independent researcher who is using bioacoustics to set to study humpback whales off the coast of India and <clears throat> so uh, she has <coughs> so as last month Manga Bay published an article uh, titled what underwater sounds tell us about marine life and what it tells us is the world beneath the ocean's surface is a noisy place uh, as humanity is interjecting more and more frequently intruding on the underwater soundscape. So in order to understand how marine animals use underwater space and how human activities affect their behavior, uh, this whale hugger has been gathering hard data. Yes, so in this Fields Notes segment, Bopar Dikar plays for us some of her recordings all right, so we are going to hear directly from the humpbacks, and uh, you know this is a little bit uh, scratchy here. So let's first what she does is she shares with us what marine animals hear pretty much anywhere on the planet. Uh, then we're going to hear the whale's response to this. Take it away, humans. So that is what humans are adding to the eco, the underwater ecosystem. And this is how the, the whales and anything else are responding to what the humans are telling the whales. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! There you go. And we 
say you heard it first here on Manga Bay and Humpty Dumpty Tribe, and I want to thank uh, Dr. Doolittle for the hard data. Now that we have the hard data, let's uh, see what we're going to do about it. All right, from the bottom of the Indian Ocean to, uh, good God, guys, there's so much in here, and I just need to uh, pick and choose. Oh, God, we're going to skip over Ethiopia. We're going to move across uh Borneo uh, <coughs> let's see here in the <coughs> the shithole land mass of India invasive plants invasive plants the newest fast growing threat to what's left of India's rhinos no shit Sherlock and I'm thinking I'm going to come back and make this next story uh, perhaps my chronicle of the collapse on that other channel talking about martial law in the Philippines. This article titled, It is Open Season right now. I'm not quite sure what this article is even doing in Manga Bay, uh, but good for them. So maybe we'll introduce Manga Bay to Collapse Chronicles readers. Uh, okay, here's some real uh, toe-tapping news. We have some hard news from the Soft Commodities Forum. Yes. Um, which... Uh, Manga Bay describes, they, they <clears throat> give us an English translation to what, the, uh, to what the Soft Commodities Forum is. <clears throat> Quote, it is a major, where, where major global soy traders go beyond deforestation commitments, beyond deforestation commitments to cover all ecosystems for the first time. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. Yes. Anyway, uh, from there to uh, the shithole country of Indonesia's Papua New Guinea region, nothing <coughs> was left as flash floods and landslides slammed into New Guinea, killing 90 people and displacing thousands. The country's disaster, the New Guinea Disaster Mitigation Agency, Yes, the New Guinea Disaster Mitigation Agency. They're, they're, how would you like to work for them? Cited human-caused deforestation as contributing to the scale of the damage. No shit, Sherlock. Meanwhile, Indonesia's Environment Ministry denies that massive logging has occurred in the area. Bullshit detected. Take precautions. Yes. Okay, what are the world's trees up to? It is International Forest Day. <coughs> today, uh, it's either today or someday this week was International Forest Day. So how are the trees responding? Uh, what are the trees up to on International Forest day. Forests scramble to absorb carbon as emissions continue to increase. <clears throat> A recent study <coughs> suggests that global forests <coughs> are absorbing more CO2 
as atmospheric greenhouse gas concentrations increase, but they still cannot keep up with humanity's runaway CO2 emissions. No shit, Sherlock. Yes. Researchers say there is uncertainty about the ability of forests to keep increasing their carbon absorption capacity over the long term, especially if the climate heats up past a certain point. No shit, Sherlock. Okay, so how are companies that cut down the forest, what is the report on the planet eaters? for International Forest Day. Hmm. Wow. Companies to miss their 2020 zero deforestation deadline. No shit, Sherlock. Major companies around the world with a self-imposed deadline of ending tropical deforestation in their supply chains by 2020 Bullshit level, DEFCON 5! will not meet the target. Hmm. A report released for International Forest Day says, huh, <coughs> the Forest 500 report is an annual assessment of the zero deforestation commitments made by 350 planet-eating companies involved in just four commodities, cattle, palm oil, soy, and timber, not to mention the 150 financial institutions bankrolling them. Those four commodities are responsible for the bulk of agricultural expansion in Latin America and Southeast Asia. And agricultural expansion in turn is responsible for most of the deforestation in these regions. The report calls on the companies it assesses to do more to ensure their actions match their rhetoric on ending deforestation. Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. Yes. Okay. What? A lot of stories. All sorts of stories on forestry to, uh, you know, Manga Bay is <clears throat> the number one uh, environmental organization reporting on the collapse of the of the planet's forests, and most of their uh, <clears throat> roundup today is around that. Uh, here's one. Many. I'm just gonna let, let's pick one more from the International Forest Day roundup on Manga Bay. <clears throat> Protecting small, old-growth forest fails to preserve bird diversity. No shit, Sherlock. Recent research suggests that designating small fragments of old-growth temperate forest as protected areas is not sufficient to halt the loss of bird diversity. Hmm, do you think so? Uh, in, the, in this study of this one 64-acre old-growth forest in, uh, in the eastern U.S., nine birds known to historically inhabit the forest no longer nest there. <coughs> this is a 40-year study, so from 40 years ago where they've been keeping tabs, the jury is in. Uh, compared to 40 years ago, nine birds known to historically inhabit the forest no longer nest there at all, and many other species have lower populations than 
expected. No shit, Sherlock. Okay, I guess we're moving away from uh, forest. Let's go down there to the shithole country of Chile. Uh, the latest story about the salmon industry going up against indigenous indigenous people in Chile. Take a wild guess who is going to win the salmon wars between uh, the planet eaters and the indigenous people. But uh, from Chile to the shithole country of, of Brazil, I, I was hoping uh, Manga Bay was going to report on this. And good for them. <clears throat> Bozo Naro on the move as international meetings push the agribusiness agenda. No shit, Sherlock. On his first trip outside of Brazil to meet with another head of state, Jair Bozonaro met with Donald Trump at the White House this week. Bozonaro also visited the CIA and dined with Trump former strategist Steve Bannon believed to have had a role in helping Bozonaro get elected. Huh. <coughs> Bozonaro and Trump are known to have discussed trade, but their meeting was conducted in secret. No shit, Sherlock. Bozonaro and you hear these sandhill cranes flying over. I love those sandhill cranes. I guess they are heading north. These are the sandhill cranes that have the misfortune of uh, overwintering in the Texas marshlands uh, before they go underwater. And I guess I think they're heading back to the Platte River. Bye bye, sandhill cranes. Anyway, where was I? Bozo Naro, in, um, you know, meeting in secret, Bozo Naro dubbed the Trump of the Tropics. Yes. Uh, has long expressed his interest in stronger U.S. relations, though Brazil's agriculture minister is also courting China. No shit, Sherlock. Uh, in a speech at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, Bozo Naro stated that the Brazilian government <coughs> wants more agreements with the U.S. in a number of areas, especially mining and agriculture. Bozo Naro added that there is much to be still discovered in the Amazon rainforest, a likely reference to untapped resources and agribusiness possibilities there. No shit, Sherlock. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, anyway, let me jump ahead to uh, a, a related story, which it is, I guess this is getting back to the forest roundup. Brazil's, <clears throat> anyone who doesn't understand the connecting the dots between the Trump of the tropics speaking to the U.S. Chamber of Commerce uh, and this story Obviously, the humpback whales have had a failure to communicate with you. <clears throat> anyway, so what are Brazil's key deforestation drivers? And this, and this is before Bozonaro even got there. Pasture, cropland, and land speculation. 
No shit, Sherlock. New research shows that the expansion of cropland in Brazil nearly doubled between 2000 and 2014 from a little over 100,000 square miles to 180,000 square miles. And 80%, and, and this is just looking through the year 2014, this is five years before Bozo Naro hit the scene, 80% of new cropland in Brazil came as a result of the conversion of pastures, while only 20% resulted from the direct conversion of native vegetation to croplands, which leads to the No Shit Sherlock con uh, conclusion. However, while pasture land like absorbs cropland expansion and displaces it away from forest, should studies show Brazilian deforestation is to be most highly driven by land speculation, whereby land speculators go in, deforest an area, sell off the timber, then convert the land to pasture, then again selling the land to a soy producer at a much increased price. Uh, <clears throat> Amazon conversion to pasture lands remains high. Yes. Uh, meanwhile, outside of the Amazon rainforest, the Cerrado savanna has also seen rapid deforestation due to both pasture lands and soy plantations. No shit, Sherlock. Uh, okay. Uh, we actually unbelievably uh, have a small victory. Uh, with, with the indigenous. Yeah, a, an island mapped for mines gets a reprieve after violent protest. So the planetators are backing off. We'll see how long that lasts. Uh, what's going on with tearing down the dams? I had a an interview. Well, my you know my little milk toast twin had a an interview with the natural progressive last night and we were got into this discussion about the new deal the original new deal and i was pointing out how it was the original new deal the ecological catastrophe unleashed on this country and the uh original new deal and i open up manga bay today and here we are Tear down the dams. New coalition strives to enshrine the rights of orcas. Uh, a new coalition of scientists, indigenous people, community groups, and lawyers is pushing for legal recognition of the rights of an endangered orca population known as the uh, Southern killer southern resident killer whales which are down to just 75 individuals the orcas are imperiled by noise by noise pollution that you know that the story we started off with could certainly have been uh, the orcas as well as the humpbacks and any other marine mammal they're being imperiled by noise pollution, chemical pollution, the impending construction of Canada's Trans Mountain Pipeline, and most of all, severe sh salmon shortages caused by the damming of the rivers that feed into the sea, meaning rivers that were dammed as part of the 
of FDR's New Deal. Oh, I should... Uh, well, they... You know, I, I, I wish... What Manga Bay does is they bring out their stories consecutively. So, it, you know, when I'm doing this round of it, kind of bounces back and forth. So let's uh, run up there to the Bering Sea to get our report uh, from the Bering Sea this week as Arctic near 2019's winter maximum, Bering Sea was virtually ice-free. No shit, Sherlock. Uh, Arctic sea ice extent appeared to hit its annual maximum on March 13th. Uh, and wow, take a... Uh, imagine this. The 2019 maximum stats are among the top 10 lowest on record and well below the 1981 to 2010 average. No shit, Sherlock. One thing that stood out this winter was the extraordinarily low amounts of ice in the Bering Sea at the start of March surpassing record lows seen last year for the same dates. Hmm. Seasonal ice in the Bering Sea is, all, is known to be volatile, but it is getting worse under climate change. Yes. And another trend, notice, that this year is that Greenland has now been getting rain in the winter. It's just raining. I mean, liquid rain falling in Greenland in the middle of, of, of winter. <clears throat> and these rain events are triggering sudden rapid ice melt and are responsible for a tremendous amount of annual runoff. Ultimately, these Greenland rains could prove catastrophic for the ice sheet and for sea level rise. No shit, Sherlock. Uh... All right, we have investors calling on the world's biggest soy companies to make firm commitments to end deforestation in wildlife-rich areas of South America. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. Okay, what is the Vaquita report? We just got the southern right whale, southern, I'm sorry, the southern killer whale uh, down to 75. We now have 10 Vaquitas left on the planet as Sea Shepherd said it found another dead Vaquita on a gill net. Um, populations estimates range from 6 to 22 and they figure 10. Um, despite a ban on gill nets, Vaquita numbers have continued to decline. No shit, Sherlock. Anyway, guys, uh, let's see. Let's do one more, uh, and then I got to come back to part two. Uh, anyway, no, we, we got three more. Good Lord, uh, I could, uh, I, I could go on forever with this. If you, if you don't receive the Manga Bay 
newsletter. You need to fix that. Okay, what's going out on with palm oil biofuel? Europe, in bid to phase out palm oil biofuel, leaves fans and foes dismayed. Both palm oil producers and environmental activists alike have expressed dismay with a move by European officials to phase out palm oil-based biofuel by 2030. Needless to say, the planet eaters are, are, are just screaming bloody murder. Meanwhile, environmental activists say the policy does not go near far enough leaving loopholes that will allow palm oil produced under certain circumstances to continue being treated as a renewable fuel, that was bullshit. thereby allowing for the expansion of more palm oil estates into forest. <clears throat> Environmentalists have also criticized the policy's failure to label soybean oil as high risk in light of growing evidence that deforestation linked to the cultivation of soy may be just as bad or even worse than that of palm oil. No shit, Sherlock. Okay, two more new maps show where humans are pushing species closer to extinction. Uh, almost a quarter of the 5,400 mammal, bird, and amphibia, amphibian species mapped around the world are threatened by human impacts in more than 90% of their ranges. And at least one human impact occurred in an average of 38% of the range of any given species. Bullshit detected. Take precautions. 38% my ass. Yes, here is a story uh, about tuna fishing operations in Indonesia being certified for their sustainable practices. Indonesia is the world's biggest producer of tuna, but its fisheries have long been plagued by poaching and destructive fishing practices. No shit, Sherlock. Yes. D, 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 D. And I just think, uh, I think we're just going to wind it up there, guys. I could go on and on but I realize I'm talking to myself and I want to come back with part two where we're going to go over and hear from the Center for Biological Diversity and those eco-Nazis over at the Washington Post coming up in one minute uh, for part one of today's ecological meltdown roundup rant. Get out there and enjoy it while you still can, even if you're not a humpback whale. <laughs>